Well, the first step is usually to uh, hire counsel or to have counsel on hand um, and a cease and desist letter would be issued um, unless there are some extraordinary uh, circumstances where uh, the, the owner that uh, was the party to the uh, cease and desist would be irreparably injured or harmed um, within a very short period of time. So typically a cease and desist letter is issued um, to the uh, to the either current or former employee that was a party uh, to the non-compete agreement. And then the competitor also too um, may have some liability for uh, what they call tortious interference with the contract or with contractual rights. And so a cease and desist may be sent to the uh, competitor as well. Um, there are also uh, steps that, like I said, if uh, the, uh, the harm is immediate or you've sent the cease and desist and they've either ignored it or say uh, they uh, respond and, and uh, in essence say that the non-compete for one reason or another does not uh, apply to them and it's not enforceable against them. Uh, and then you would litigate and uh, their possible remedies would be to um, file suit to uh, enforce the terms of the uh, non-compete, which may have a liquidated damage clause. And liquidated damage clause just means that you basically have both have decided, the, the employer and the employee have decided what the damages would be if it's violated. And so it's right in the non-compete agreement that if the employee violates it, that these are what the damages will be. Um, but if not, um, then you could get monetary damages. Uh, you could get injunctive relief to keep the employee from actually working for the competitor or revealing any kind of trade secrets or intellectual property that they may have. Um, and so that would involve litigation. 